So Mark, this holiday season, Caesars is giving all of their employees a great gift. It's a $100 gift card, but the uh, the catch is that you can only use it at Caesars properties. So admission for one into Bacchanal Buffet or something else, good or not good? I mean, it's something at least. I, I remember getting like a $15 grocery gift card once for, for Christmas for my work, and they only bought it because it was a big client and they had to spend money so they're like all right we'll buy everybody a gift cards so it's better than nothing but yeah the fact that it's you know only at caesar's property is is a bit, bit cheap but hey you know i don't i don't know do you want to dine where you work uh, most people probably don't yeah i mean and they have some good restaurants right i mean who doesn't like a good guy fieri burger I remember working at MGM Grand back in the 90s, and back then they treated you really well for, like, Thanksgiving. You would go pick up a turkey and all the fixings and everything else, and they would give you gift cards. And then there was profit sharing for Christmas, uh, but that was the old days of Vegas, not the current days of Vegas. A $100 gift card is better than nothing, as you say. A few free cocktails, I guess. Yeah, I, I think somebody else commented that MGM doesn't give people anything anymore uh, below it on Twitter. Now, we don't know if they work there or not. But yeah, at least it's something I'd probably go to Vanderpump and, and hang out there and get a couple cocktails. You know, there definitely is some good options. I just know a lot of people, I mean, you can't get drunk at work, so... <laughs> I'm a little I'm a little upset, Sean. You didn't get the memo. We're supposed to be wearing ugly Christmas sweaters. You know, it's the holiday episode. I know, I know. I got my ugly orange uh, shirt. I'm channeling That's a right. uh, Netherlands soccer fan from the World Cup. That's from Halloween. You, you, you mix up the holidays. Oh, well. Oh, well. I didn't bring it on this cruise, but uh, let's get into the show, Mark, because uh, did you hear that more people are robbing casinos than ever before? Uh, we've had, what, four robberies now in the last six weeks. We talked about Resorts World and Gold Coast. And now, just this week, what, Silverton and Green Valley Ranch were hit. And there's a bolo out on a guy. We're not quite sure which of these robberies he's uh, responsible for, but I think the Silverton one based on the picture. But apparently he's stealing cars from valets. He's robbed a number of casinos in November and December. Again, we're not sure if he's suspected in all of the robberies. But, yeah, we have a serial robber on the loose in Las Vegas, four casinos in six weeks robbed here. I think that's the problem with robber robberies and, and burglars and stuff. They they can never get enough. Like if you just stopped after one or two, like you got away with it, just call it a day, but they keep going. So they'll end up getting caught. But, you know, we made the jokes back when pandemic was, you know, big time in 2020 and everybody was wearing masks going in everywhere that it felt weird going into a bank like Wild Wild West with a, you know, a thing covering your face and, you know, he's taking that to advantage, going in all messed up with gloves. And normally that'd be a dead giveaway. Somebody's doing something shady, but now it just, oh, OK, that's normal. Yeah, it's a uh, it's, it's a welcoming thing, I guess, for if you're a if you're a robber. But it seems like they know who he is now. At least they have a profile for him and every casino is probably looking for him. But again, we talked about this before. It seems like it's way too easy to rob a casino because the security isn't going to intervene. That seems pretty much confirmed at this point because of liability. They don't want to hurt other guests. So, I mean, eventually the people get caught, right? I mean, that's the thing with bank robberies, right? I think the odds of getting away with a single bank robbery are pretty high comparative to other things that you could do. But then the more you do it, eventually you get caught and it's hard to stop. I don't know. We'll see if, if this becomes a trend in the new world here. Yeah, let us know what you guys think. Is this crazy? Are we missing something here? Is this just very common for there to be this many robberies in such a short period of time? Or is this like a new thing? I'm very interested to hear from people out of the comments because I don't follow robberies all that closely. But we've talked before about how the media doesn't cover them so much. These ones got very light coverage in the media. But they always hold back a lot of details, I guess, for an investigation or whatever. But uh, yeah, super interesting stuff. Pro probably because they don't want people to realize they can just walk in with a note and no weapon and, and walk out with 30 grand. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like that's yeah. all you need. All right. Also surprising was the amount of feedback we got after our last show talking about fixing the Vegas Strip. Boy, did we trigger a lot of people, especially you, by saying that they should close off vehicular traffic, even though I don't think you actually said that was a realistic proposal, but no, you said maybe I, yeah. it would make more sense. <laughs> I said, I wish they would have done that from the start, you know, if they would have planned for it. It definitely is possible if that was in the plans from the get-go. Like, not possible now, but I don't know. People took it as, hey, let's shut down all the streets now. I know that wouldn't work, but if they would have designed it that way, it definitely would have been, it wouldn't have been a problem at all, I don't think. You know, you can build the roads around the outside and make it kind of like an all-inclusive walk-through place. You know, it's done other, other areas in the country, in the world, so... 
It's not like it's unheard of, but I still think it'd be cool. I do too, but obviously not uh, plausible with the, the road situation. People were upset we were talking about the escalators being broken, saying that we're too lazy to walk upstairs. We're not talking about ourselves here. We're talking about the bigger pedestrian experience, the bigger visitor experience here. Uh, after a long day of walking on the strip, I don't think many people want to use those stairs, but it does happen. And, you know, whenever I do it, I just think, you know, I could use the exercise and I do it. It's not a personal issue for me, but the experience isn't great. And one other thing, a suggestion that one of the readers, commenters, someone on Twitter too, I don't know if it's the same person or different people, but thanks to them, talking about like a gondola system made by Doppelmeyer or one of the other companies from Europe that builds these big gondola systems. Disney installed one in Disney World called the Skyliner, which has been very successful. And that could run down the middle of the strip, move a lot of people. It's a fraction of the cost of something like light rail. And you could use the existing bridges to kind of get people to the station. So another interesting concept, but don't get mad at us. We're just, uh, we're just talking. Like, I don't think anybody disagrees that the strip experience for the pedestrian is not a good one, especially considering it's like one of the most busy pedestrian corridors in the entire country. Yeah, and another person brought up the uh, the tram that you take under the bridge to Roosevelt Island, which we've both been on, and is it's really great, and, and I enjoyed it, and it's it will give you cool sight lines too, so I think it would add to it. Like, people would ride it just to ride it, as well as to get around, so I think that would be a kind of unique, something you don't see in the U.S. all that much, and it would be cheaper, easier, be right on the strip versus the monorail that's behind all the casinos and off the strip and people forget about it or don't even know it's there. So I think it would be something that would work, but I don't think that will ever be something they even discuss. Yeah, I think we both acknowledge that none of this stuff is probably ever going to happen. Although, like, another thing about a gondola, like you're talking about, whether it be, like, a single-car gondola or one of those systems like Disney Skyliner, is the views would be incredible, right? I mean, Wind Palace in Macau has a gondola system exactly like this that takes you from out in the street into the casino, which is incredible and amazing, and it would work well, and it's never going to happen in Las Vegas, so don't beat us up. But I will not uh, I will not concede to the fact that the strip experience for a pedestrian is not very good, and we could do better. So leave your hate comments below. We'll, we'll discuss them again uh, this week. If you're mad at Mark's comment about closing off the strip, mark at milestomemories.com. That's all i got to say. I'm not going to I'm not gonna <laughs> yeah. defend him anymore. Shoot, no. <laughs> shoot me some emails. All right, so... Hard Rock has transitioned officially to taking over Mirage, and a few things happened with that, including the Unity by Hard Rock program taking over, and we'll talk about that in a second. But it seemed like there was some roughness in that first couple days. For a while, hotel reservations were completely down. You couldn't book a room there. And then the Unity program, their Players Club, didn't work for much of the first day. But I think they ironed it all out, and I know Vital Vegas tweeted that Dealers were complaining about low tips, but it's just a very slow time of year. Also complaining that their health insurance went up by $400. The joys and pains of corporate transition, I guess. Yeah, that's a steep uh, increase. 400 bucks a month, that's not nothing small. I mean, the tips, I think, will come. Especially, it might be not as good for a little bit. And then, I think, once they transform and build the new tower and stuff, like you almost want to hold on because it's going to be probably one of the hotter prop- properties in Vegas once it's open and fully launched and fully hard rock. So I definitely wouldn't want to give up that spot. I'd probably try to stick through it and see unless, you know, there's more costs everywhere else. That's super expensive. Um, I know, you know, Mark uh, Meltzer did a a breakdown of room rates and the uh, resort fees are high. Parking is like 18 bucks a night, which I I think is kind of crazy, especially for something that far north on the strip. But, you know, they got to make their money, I guess. Yeah, the resort fee is forty four twenty two, and I assume that includes tax, which is pretty similar to what it was before with MGM. And uh, yeah, they have that eighteen dollar parking, so they're not kind of debuting with free parking. They're keeping that paid parking around, which is a bit surprising to me. And uh, yeah, we'll we'll see. I wonder what the effect is really for MGM players. Are MGM players not going to go to the Mirage anymore because they don't have MGM rewards? Will they give it a chance because Hard Rock is matching status and Travel Ruby? kind of confirmed that for us, saying that you're able to bring your gold or platinum card to the Unity by Hard Rock desk and get matched to their top tier status or their icon status. They do also have an invite-only status above that, but you get their highest sort of normal status, and that gives you a bunch of perks, including a, uh, what, $100 credit if you're a gold or $300 if you're platinum matching to them, so you're getting sort of like a celebration type dinner experience there too. So first off, anybody who has MGM status, gold or platinum, 
or noir, I guess, you should absolutely go match, get your free credit. Might as well do that, and you're going to get status. So you should get some equivalent perks, and maybe even some comp offers, right, by getting this status. I know when I did my match in Atlantic City, I got uh, quite a few offers right after that that I couldn't take advantage of, but hopefully uh, this will be a good thing for people and they should give it a try, but it's a tough one for those dealers who are dealing with the transition. Yeah, I think that's a good promotion. I definitely would go in the door just for the, you know, for gold, you can get $100 to gamble or uh, food and beverage, depending on which way you want to go with it. I guess you get to decide when you're, when you're doing the match. So you know, we've talked about in the past how you can match Hyatt status over to MGM Gold. So you, if you have Hyatt status, this is like a free $100 dinner in, in Vegas. So you better take advantage of it for sure. I do wonder how long they'll let that, you know, roll out and how long it will go. But this just shows the difference. I know this isn't for like somebody new signing up for it. It's to, to match people over and keep MGM loyalists. But, you know, compared to what we talked about with Virgin, where they're putting you into a raffle if you brought someone in and convinced them to sign up and referred them. It was like a whole weird type of thing. This is much more straightforward. I definitely think it will be popular and people will go do it. Now, the whole gaming experience and what the program offers will be deciding if they stay or not. But this should get them in the door for sure, which is, you know, goal number one. And the nice thing about Unity by Hard Rock is that it is a nationwide program. Almost all of their properties are now on it, and I believe even the Atlantic City one will be on it probably this year. Uh, but you'll be able to go to any of the regional Hard Rocks, earn points, use them in Vegas, vice versa. So this is a pretty robust program with a lot of properties, probably more robust than MGM Rewards when you consider they have, I, don't, I mean, they have quite a few markets now, I guess, with Detroit and Biloxi and uh, Atlantic City and a few others. But uh, certainly if you like regional casinos, there's a lot of Hard Rocks around and it's nice to be in that ecosystem. So yeah, definitely go and match and get your stuff. Good to see them offering that. The big leagues compared to Virgin, who is uh, <laughs> offering their little uh, raffle for signing up. Good times at Mirage. We'll continue to keep you guys updated. Still called Mirage for a couple more years. And again, I'll just plug that video. If you wanna know all of the stuff that Hard Rock's gonna do to the Mirage, check out the gutting Mirage video. We went into full detail about what you can expect at the new Hard Rock Las Vegas. But for now, just a different owner, same name. Did you see that they were charging 20 to $30 to get a view of the volcano that they're gonna rip out to? <laughs> I thought that was <laughs> yeah, like salt, exactly. salt in the wound. They're like, hey, we know you guys like this thing. We're gonna take it away, but you're gonna pay to see it. Yeah, you get the, you get the view. What are they gonna charge for the guitar tower view? when it's all said and done. Although those volcano rooms are going to have a nice, con yeah, they're going to have a nice construction view uh, for a while. So yeah, you better get in while you can right there. All right. So we talked about Plaza doing the drone show on New Year's Eve and the LVCBA released a whole list of everything going on in Las Vegas on New Year's Eve, including the traditional fireworks show that they do across multiple strip properties. This year, Aria, Caesars Palace, MGM Grand, Planet Hollywood, Resorts World, The Strat, Treasure Island and the Venetian are all participating in that. So it should be a very widespread, pretty cool show, although it won't have any drones, Mark. So start there. I'm uh, I'm a little disappointed. Wouldn't it be cool to see like eight drone shows over the strip all synced together? Maybe we need a few more years to do that. Sounds pretty expensive. Need a million drones going the whole length of the strip, but <laughs> it would be cool. And, you know, just if they're all kind of coordinated, that's I like that they do that. Um, Versus, you know, show here, show there, like if they intertwine them, that would be awesome. Uh, and of course, the strip will be shut down for all of this. So you can walk and and uh, do what we always want to do every day. Mark's Mark's dream. <laughs> Mark's dream scenario <laughs> happens uh, on New Year's Eve. All right. There are a lot of acts in town, too, including uh, the Killers. Hometown, the Killers are performing at Chelsea at Cosmo. You have Kevin Hart over at Resorts World. Bruno Mars is doing his residency Pitbull is performing at the Resorts World Event Center, which I didn't even realize was finished. So I guess that's a, a new venue there at Resorts World that they were under construction since they opened. And Pitbull is amazing. I saw him once uh, at, believe it or not, at the old Hard Rock in the joint over there. One of the best shows I've ever seen. So if you ever get a chance to see Pitbull, you wouldn't think it. I mean, I've liked his music enough, but I wasn't ever a big fan of his. And watching him perform, really good. And Gwen Stefani... Bob the Drag Queen from uh, from RuPaul's Drag Race. Everybody's here in Las Vegas on New Year's Eve, so it'll be a fun time. If I'm going to go see one show, though, it's going to be Plaza's Drone Show, if I'm being quite honest. Yeah, I think that's the, the most unique of it. You know, the other ones you can see 
anytime, anywhere drone show, you know, maybe will be once or twice a year that they'll do it. Hopefully they keep doing it and hopefully it's successful and, and it comes out well and, and they do it 4th of July and the New Year's and everything. So, and then maybe the strip. All right. And the uh, last story, the Proper Eats Food Hall, you know, quote unquote, I know people out there like it when we do the air quotes with food hall. Yeah, they also call it a food court, but it, <laughs> it now opened replacing Aria's buffet on the second level of that property. It looks pretty good. And, you know, I think every casino that opens now is going to have a food hall, right? It just seems like it's the in thing to do. Um, Circus Circus opened their food court last year, right? And that was more traditional Dairy Queen, stuff like that. The food halls tend to have more unique food, higher quality food. But if you look at the prices, prices at these food halls are kind of similar to what you would pay at a sit-down restaurant in another city. Although it seems like the food quality is pretty good. It looks really nice. I saw some video on Twitter and uh, yeah, it looks pretty nice in there. A nice addition. I am sad. I really did like that buffet though. Yeah, it's that, you know, the buffet is kind of dying a bit like we've talked about in the in the past episodes, but there's still a couple out there. So sad to see it go away. You know, I always thought of the food courts in before they became special food halls. They were kind of like the way place you could go when you're gambling and drinking and stuff and get something that was reasonably priced. And now it's basically the cost of going to a regular restaurant so i don't see the attraction as much i know the food quality is probably a bit better but i always like to have that one option like go get a slice of pizza for six bucks and now it's nine ten twelve bucks a slice which is just crazy uh so i would like to see kind of a mixture of that like you can have your higher end food hall stuff but at least have a couple that are you know good grab and go places that that offer value for the people well the good news for you pizza oki at uh, at the food hall there only charges $6 a slice for a regular slice, and I think it's like $30 for a pie. The bad news is that Vital Vegas said it wasn't very good, so I don't know. I mean, that's the only review I saw of it so far, but another it's be pizza option those, on the strip. Those Cake Boss machines spitting out pizza, it's got to be better than that at least. <laughs> is it me, or have we just gotten a lot of like really bad pizza options this last year or two on the strip? There used to be so many good ones coming up, but yeah, I, I haven't seen great reviews of a lot of the new pizza Although maybe it is good, you know, Vital Vegas isn't a food critic, so we will uh, we'll take that with a grain of salt. But yeah, it's it's open now, and you can find it on the second floor of Aria. And you know, Buffalo Bills out in Prim is opening up tomorrow, as we or actually the day that this comes out on December twenty third. I'll be driving back home from my cruise December twenty fourth, so I'm going to stop in there. So on the next show, I'll be able to talk to you guys a little bit about what it's like. I may film a standalone video as well, but I'm excited to get back in there. So a lot of fun stuff coming up. And I did want to talk in a future show about the casino here on the ship as well. So a lot to look forward to. But in the meantime, I wanted to wish you, Mark, a Merry Christmas and everybody out there a Merry Christmas and a Happy Hanukkah and a, a Happy New Year. But we'll, we'll get to that next week because we have another show coming before New Year's. But yeah, it's been fun and interesting to see this end of year. It's been an interesting year in Las Vegas. Yeah, definitely happy holidays to everybody out there for watching. Thank you so much for watching, for subscribing. Uh, it's been a crazy year in Vegas, and it's been a pleasure to cover it, and so many interesting stories every week. It's You, you think that we'd run out of stuff to talk about, but every week something you know new and interesting pops up, so I can't wait to see the new casinos getting built and all the changes that are coming to Vegas, and you know prices keep going up, but... Hopefully, you know, there's still value to be had there for sure. Prices keep going up, but the love for Vegas never dies. And we will continue in 2023 to cover it for you. And in the meantime, hit us up in the comments. Let us know what you think about any of these topics. Is a gondola system on the strip? Is that the answer? Or are we just idiots again? Be a little nice, right? It's Christmas Both. week, so be a little nice <laughs> in the comments. But <laughs> you can disagree with us. And we'd love to discuss everything with you there. And if you like the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you receive notifications of all of our new videos. We do two videos a week, Tuesdays and Fridays, and lots of good stuff if you haven't watched one of our videos lately, all of the latest Vegas news. Thanks so much for watching. Talk to you next time. See you on Tuesday.